There has been a surge in new science recently when it comes to the galactic current sheet, both its character and its nature in triggering the solar micronova and its place in the larger Earth catastrophe cycle. That new science deserves some placement and review. Here, we'll be focusing on the galactic current sheet in the wake of potential detections of the arrival of its central zone, and then we'll lead into the solar event. First, when we are discussing the galactic current sheet, it's not the visible spirals that span 3,000 to 5,000 light years across, with sometimes much more between them. We're talking about the electric field rippling out from the center, driven by rotation and confirmed in math and theory. They constantly refine that science as Earth orbits in the Sun's current sheet, a giant lap. The larger Taurus jet model and surrounding plane has come to rule the large-scale galactic astrophysical progress, and then, of course, the observations have only shown to harmonize. Let's see some of this evidence, starting in the realm of simulations of the fields, which, when placing flows opposite and parallel, they want to form the ballerina skirt waviness that appears near the midplane in the newest galactic field simulation, properly perpendicular to the fields breaking up and down from the wave crests, lets you know they're solid in their theory. And, of course, the newest electric field simulation of those parallel oppositely flowing fields produces those endless ripplings. In the realm of observations, these would include the gamma signatures where the current sheet crosses the higher plasma and dust density midplane, the galactic equator, or how they've known this cloud of dust and plasma is heading right at us for decades and they just say it's a remnant of a past supernova. I love coincidences. Anyway, add on to the previous knowledge of the wave amplitude, we now also know the wavelength, tens of light years, putting us about 200 or so ripples out from the galactic center in terms of the electric field. It's another gem from the recent Voyager studies on the magnetic pressure fronts it's encountering. Also key is how it's driven by the rotation. In the lab, in the solar system, everywhere, if the central node wasn't spinning, the field would be flat. But you put a spin to her and she happily abides by the physics of plasmas under the influence of that central node. This is the why to the ubiquitous observations matching theory, matching math, and simulations, and more observations, the rotation of the system. Now to move on in asking what effect this impacting sheet has on the sun, we can ask what the sun sheet, an interplanetary magnetic field, the IMF, does to the Earth. In our textbook are numerous examples of how it forces not only the atmosphere, but earthquake patterns as well. Since the book came out, we've seen a continued push from nearly the entire field of relevant journals to include the importance of this IMF to the geomagnetic indices most studied and used in these fields. In April, there was a surge in papers on this topic in a number of different journals. The future of space weather science has indeed been reshaped by our understanding of the geomagnetic importance of the sun's current sheet. The one not in print until June was also published online early in April. As someone who reads all that literature in this arena, it has been like watching a tsunami wash over the land, the importance of the interplanetary magnetic field. And so now we wonder, what is a global magnetic disruption and a slew of electrodynamic effects of that current sheet going to do at the galactic level when it hits the sun? It is a galactic magnetic reversal after all, but also, Unlike the Sun's current sheet, which has only minor plasma density shifts, the galaxy is dusty, gaseous, and not at all cleaned like the interior of our solar system. That plasma density of the galactic current sheet picks up the ambient dust and gas like an electrostatic duster in space. And in terms of triggering a nova, that's where we'll begin. Of the recurring nova class, which far outnumber the supernova, They've believed for a long time that the only way to trigger these recurring blasts was for a binary to suck material off of its partner, leading to a runaway reaction on the stellar surface as the light and solar wind gets blocked and the pressure and energy inside rise. Except, there has always been this little issue of not being able to actually spot the binary, especially at the smaller recurrent nova. In fact, most of their rationale for explaining the binary is based on photometry and cycles of brightness variation or eruption, the problem is, if an alien species is doing this look at the sun, it will see an outburst uptick every 11 years with the sunspot cycle. Should they expect the sun to be sucking material off a binary, triggering this uptick every 11 years? Or would they know better and know a bit more about stellar cycles? 
than last year. It's like somebody sabotaged the floodgates. It began with a completely different mode of eruption than accretion, and this makes a great deal of sense. And you don't actually need a black hole as they had in this paper. You need a way to inject that electromagnetic interaction and turbulence into the stellar system. How about subjecting a star to a galactic magnetic reversal, global magnetic disruption, and the resulting electrodynamics, all while you are dumping in that extra material from the galactic current sheet in the form of dust and gas? You've got both of those nova triggers wrapped up in one arriving electric field current sheet. Then, they began to erode the remaining foundations, including this one, the preclusion of the required binary at such an event. This was a major stepping stone. Then came the sporadic accretions satisfying the thresholds, rather than the constant feeding from the binary. The class of binary needed in the models is now not really a thing anymore as it's more about the interactions that count. And of course, there was speculation when they found a dark nova evacuation shell from a poor little star that wandered into a molecular cloud and exploded from the interaction. Speculation until they looked again and found a bunch more. We continue to see their definition of pre-nova conditions expanding into the impossible by the month. And in each case, it shines the light a bit more on the 12,000 year cycle event of our sun and its possibility. So let's talk a bit more about that. The idea of a recent nearby Nova is not a new one, but it's remained largely unchanged since its inception with the discovery of isotopes and dust from Nova level events. The last two decades have focused on an event about 2 million years ago, but as the isotopes continue to be deposited, they appear younger than originally believed, and more isotopes are discovered. Last year, they announced that the dust doesn't leave the Nova remnant. It's trapped, and now we've got a big problem. Because we know the Nova events are not that old, the isotopes would have decayed, and the Nova could not have been too far away because those isotopes wouldn't even have arrived here yet. So that's why they say we need a recent nearby Nova. But the problem with that is that a nova that close to Earth not that long ago would have destroyed us, and that's clearly not happened. It's also not one of the smaller recurrent nova. We can see the stars nearby, and there are no candidates. And if the dust and the corresponding isotopes must have been trapped in the remnant, that really just leaves the sun. Perhaps the weirdest hurdle for new listeners to clear is the idea of a small nova, but there have been numerous nova discovered that are not as powerful as even strong solar flares. Yes, the sun's event is on the smaller end of all of the nova, but it's not the smallest. Heck, the nova aspect from a pulsar burst wouldn't even make it to Mercury if it happened on the sun. A quick note here to end. One of the best of such papers recently described the recurrent nova star at the center of the Stingray Nebula. Couldn't have chosen a better description myself and it was more correct than most might realize. By the way, the Astrophysical Journal wouldn't let them publish this until they changed the title and took out the phrase Miniature Nova. You can check. Luckily, I know where to find the original. The current sheet is real. It's a double Nova trigger. It's here now, and we're about to repeat history here between the Sun and Earth. The closest stars, the smaller red dwarfs, have all activated recently under the influence of the sheet. The planets are changing too, most faster than the Earth is. And of course, we've seen the Sun's primary magnetic and chemical shifts towards micronova shell accumulation have begun as well, which you can learn about at the links below the video and the longer playlists. Check out our book on this topic as well. It and our solar terrestrial physics textbook are at otf.cells.com. Good links to catch up below the video. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.